Welcome back, folks. How are you all doing? How many of you have been around and started getting the uh, sponsor bingo to enter the prize draw for that? Got, has anyone filled the card yet? It's all right. You have the rest of the week to do it. Now, please, uh, welcome to the Build Stuff stage. Somebody who uh, runs probably the best dev conference in It is the best dev conference in Poland, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> let, let's face it. Yeah, um, of course. Microsoft MVP working on developer tech, .NET, augmented reality, metaverse, all kinds of cool stuff like that. Please give a big welcome, Rafael Lagensh. Thank you. Um, oh, you can see my presentation already. Um, welcome to my talk. Thank you for being here. Uh, hopefully, you won't fall asleep after the lunch. Um, so, well, I have 45 minutes. Okay. Um, okay, so the presentation. Um, so, it's titled From Flatland to Spaceland. And it's kind of an overview of the current state of the technology that will bring us the new computing platform or new digital transformation. And I was inspired to title this presentation this way uh, by the book by Edwin Abbott from like 19th century called Flatland. Have you ever read that book? Anyone? No one. Maybe one person. You did. Okay. Uh, so. The story in that book, briefly, is uh, it's about a flatland, a 2D uh, world where only 2D creatures live. And at one day, the creature from the 3D world comes to their world, and it's a sphere. And the only thing they can see is the intersection of the sphere with their world. So they basically say, see a circle. And actually, it's a line because it's 2D world, so they can't see from up or down or different angles. But anyway. Um, I see it in a way um, that since we got personal computing and we interact with digital content for like decades already, the only way we interacted and we still interact with the content is through the 2D screens. So everything, even if it's 3D, we interact it in a, in a way that it's a projection on the 2D screen. So it's similar to to the flatland, spaceland thing, because that's going to probably change this in the near future. And so, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm Rafael Legens. You can find me on the internet at Rafik. I work as an engineer and um, team manager for mixed reality at Transition Technologies, PSC. I'm also a mixed reality MVP from Microsoft, and I run a conference in Poland for the last 10 years called DevCon. So briefly, um, what's this presentation about and what was the motivation uh, behind uh, creating this presentation? So I got interested in augmented and virtual reality in like six years ago, more or less. Now, and I keep talking about it uh, since I got my first haul in Swan. And I, I'm interested in it and I started working with those technologies. And I visited like tens uh, conferences already and talked to many, many developers uh, about those technologies. And I'm kind of surprised that even in the tech community, the, um, it's not like it's well known. The people still appear developers, they're still not aware what's going on in the AR and VR space and what could be done with it. I mean, all. Obviously, everyone knows you can play games on that, right? Everyone knows there were like Google Glasses 10 years ago released, but that's pretty much it. When it comes to like a common knowledge. Um, so there are a lot of skeptics as well. People uh, talking things like, hey, I tried first Oculus like 10 years ago and it wasn't good and we had VR already and it's not that good at all. Or I tried Google Glasses 10 years ago, so it's crap. You can't use it, right? So the thing is that what I'm going to show is how we progress with the technology. And that's actually something that you can use and leverage and you can start working with it uh, in any industry, basically. It's not only video games, entertainment, etc. And also, um, what I start with is this to, to clear out the distinction between AR and VR. VR would be virtual reality and basically any experience that cut off your real physical world. So you're fully immersed into artificial environment. You can't see anything from the outside world. And 
On the other hand, augmented reality is digital content that enhances your physical world. So you can see your physical world, but on top of it, you can see some digital content. And the structure of the rest of the, of the presentation is that I'm going to show you briefly how biggest companies are invested in it, in it, like in AR mainly. And that probably means something, that the shift started happening. So let's start with Facebook. Now it's called Meta, so it's not a secret actually that they're very invested into virtual and augmented reality and metaverse and etc. And they started with acquiring Oculus back in the days, and in 2019 they released Meta Oculus Quest. Who owns Quest 1 or tried it? I usually ask that question to see how popular it becomes. Okay, so like two people, still, still not a lot. But Oculus Quest 1 was actually a big, uh, big hit, so they sold uh, lots of lots of um, uh, lots of them on the market. And then they released a year later, one and a half year later, they released the second version of Quest. Who owns the second version of Quest? There we go. I like it. So it's getting more and more popular. Maybe next year when I will ask this question, there will be actual 10 people on the, on the, in the room owning it. And then they released Quest Pro uh, like a month ago. Who owns Quest Pro? Not many people. Okay. But it shows how quickly it, it's been three years and they're fully invested into it and they keep delivering new devices to the market. And I have like several videos to just show you uh, because still, apparently, uh, people do not own it. So just to show it, what could be done with this kind of device. So MetaQuest is, is basically a VR headset. It's a standalone VR headset. So it's not like the old VR headsets where you had to connect your cable to the powerful PC so that then you can play your game. But right now, we have like fully contained, self-contained computers, and you just put it on your head, and just you can play, right? But what's more interesting is that Facebook or Meta, they keep iterating on the hardware and they keep adding new features only with software. So, for example, a big change was when they delivered hand tracking to VR. I think it was the first time we actually could get rid of the controllers and actually use our hands within the virtual reality experience. Because all the cameras in front of the headset that allows for tracking. Have you used this ever? Okay. So again, this kind of move, it frees us to do more things within VR. Then, with Quest Pro, what they did... These experiences are amazing on Quest 2, but how do we take them to the next level? That's Quest 2, actually. Quest, with Quest Pro was, quite different, but Project what Cambria they did is, is they used VR headset. the cameras that are in front of the, high of the headset color pass and through those the cameras the they enable the color pass-through video so that you can Advanced actually see your surroundings within the help represent your VR headset. World in the headset and with a sense of as a result, we got an augmented making reality, mixed reality device feel more comfortable. Device. So you can basically this improves switch the experience, from VR whether you're playing a quick game or working for a longer time while wearing the headset. And that we here at Meta enables are empowering developers to build experiences like so we can these play in because AR, they are a crucial part of our journey switch towards to VR, building for metaverse, example, right? to be fully where people can connect, something. and you can create, detect your share, floors explore, and sofas and, and walls, etc. And ultimately, et cetera, right? have fun. This is a really interesting experience, to be honest. And also, this is like a, quite a segue from, from what they're doing with VR. They're also working with uh, Ray-Ban, the, the company that does uh, like regular glasses, right? And maybe it's not AR, but the interesting thing is that they, se their second path of development is focusing on those small factor glasses so that they can work with um, real glasses manufacturers and they try to fit technology into those glasses. So with those glasses, you can basically listen to the streamed music and take pictures and videos and post them as Facebook stories or Instagram stories. As simple as that. But still, they're iterating up on it and we never know what, what might come next. 
Anyone owns those? Anyone heard about those before? Maybe a few people nodding heads. Okay. Then, Microsoft, my favorite, uh, because they released HoloLens 1 and then HoloLens 2, and this is, this is a wonderful piece of device. Oh, I forgot to add that Facebook, what they did with Quests 1 and 2 is actually they delivered a really nice uh, VR device, which is actually quite affordable. It's like around $300, so it, and you don't need a powerful PC to play games on it. Uh, when it comes to HoloLens, it's an augmented reality device. It's not VR. You can see your surroundings, and then on top of that, you can have uh, your holograms being displayed. It's a Windows machine. It actually runs Windows 10, and you just write Windows software on it uh, in Unity, for example. And uh, it doesn't need to be connected to any other like outside, um, outside um, computing unit. But the downside here is that it's not that cheap. It's $3,500, uh, $3, and it's basically targeted to enterprises and, and like industries like manufacturing. And whoever tried HoloLens before? One or two? Not many people. Pardon? <laughs> Well, maybe companies have. I mean, I don't know anyone who buy them themselves. I mean, that's usually where, like, companies they're buying in for the workers to like start working on some research and development project. Uh, so, how it how the experience looks like on Hololens, uh, it's best shown in this video. It, this video is from the examples of MRTK, which is mixed reality toolkit, and it's a piece of software package that allows you to create those augmented reality experiences, mainly targeted to HoloLens 1 and 2, but also it's cross-platform, so you can use this package and create um, augmented reality experiences for iOS and Android devices, and also for Quest. And it has all sorts of features, like you can see on the video. You can grab uh, digital content, you can manipulate it, you can resize it, you can even use your gaze, like um, movement of, of your eyes, to select things because it tracks your eyes movement. <clears throat> also, it detects all the floors and, and, and ceiling and, and walls so that you can place things on the floor, for example. Then would be Apple. Uh, how many of you tried augmented reality on your Apple device? Or filters on Facebook that put something on your face? That's pretty common nowadays. So uh, Apple, they do not have any head-mounted device yet. Uh, there are, of course, rumors that they're going to come up with something in 2023 or four, or maybe even later. But if you would look at the technology uh, behind augmented reality that they develop, ARKit, for example, it's in sixth iteration right now, uh, they did a lot with it. And ARKit is um, a software kit for iOS, which enables you to create um, augmented reality experiences. And it looks like this. It allows us to do things like So that's a On the real screen person of an iPad, a woman walking in a real room. And for example, you can see here the occlusion, right? Which is not that trivial thing to, uh, problem to solve. So those are digital chess. And when a person is behind it, they, the chest occludes the physical person. And then the physical person can occlude the digital content, which adds up the whole immersion feeling. On the screen of an iPad, also, they, they added like motion tracking, so you actually track to his left, people a blank augmented reality using only cameras. Socket joints mimics his movements. The man smiles as he lifts his right hand to the sky, his left hand extended down. And then you can do all the light estimation, you can add uh, shadows and detect surfaces so that you can actually put your scene in your room and it feels like it's there.
Then we have Google. They also do not have any head-mounted head device right now. I mean, they used to have Google Glass. Who, uh, uh, anyone tried it 10 years ago? One person, two, three. Yeah, that's actually a lot. So you probably remember that. And it was like, like way too early for this kind of technology to appear on the market. It was fun. But it, well, for those who tried, you probably uh, can imagine why it failed. But anyway, um, Google iterated with some other stuff, and it's very similar to what Apple has with ARKit. They have AR Core, and that's basically a very similar thing that I've just shown you, but dedicated to Android devices, smartphones. Using the Depth API, you can implement things like so particle they have effects. Like this. Here you can see rain and snow falling on the sofa. <clears throat> Interactivity, so virtual assets can directly interact with the real world including collisions and surface interactions. Here on the left, you can see someone shooting paint at a tree, and the paint is splattering and sticking, just like you'd expect. And on the right, someone is shooting virtual objects down the stairs, and they're bouncing around just like real items would. Occlusion makes it so that digital Occlusion. items can accurately Companies appear behind like real world about objects. This feature because that's on really the left, you can see thing. things look like without when occlusion. Add it, the cat the appears like a sticker awesome. on the screen, overlapping the chair. Whereas on the right, you can see that the cat is properly occluded. Part of its body is behind the chair, like a real cat would look. And finally, lighting effects, like the ones that you can see here, that enable you to realistically change the lighting in the scene. So all of what I've shown you is basically available right now. So even if you can't afford a whole lens device or any other uh, expensive VR headset or, or, or whatnot, uh, you can use your phone to start playing with uh, augmented reality. <sighs> also, there are other companies that create all sorts of headsets, be it VR or AR, and some of them are like very specialized to do one particular thing, or, one, or some of them are like 2.5D devices, which is basically kind of an assisted reality where you basically have a screen in front of your eye, like like the one here, uh, the real wear headset, which the only, has, the only thing it has is a camera and then a screen and some computing power, but it helps delivering some kind of tasks. Anyone tried it? It's very popular in like manufacturing industries, so where we need a worker that to have both hands free and have something lightweight on, her, on his or her head, and that works with all the PPE equipment so that you can wear glasses, safety glasses, or a helmet, etc. And it's not a very uh, sophisticated device. As I said, it's just a screen in front of your eye, basically. And then there are other camera uh, um, companies that, for example, focus on things like contact lenses for augmented reality. I know it sounds kind of creepy, and we probably saw uh, those uh, in some kind of sci-fi movies like uh, Altered Carbon, for example. Uh, but still, there are companies that, pushing, that, that push those kind of technologies forward. And also, if you look at, um, at the market and all the predictions for the future, it's, uh, you can see that, the growth, that there is a growth in AR and VR. And whatever the numbers are, and you can see it right now, I mean, I'm in the industry since like 2017 with uh, augmented reality, and you can actually see that year after year, more and more companies, they want to invest in those kind of technologies. And this is a good sign for us developers, because that's a whole new world of opportunities when it comes to creating software. It's not mobile, it's not uh, backend or some API stuff, but if you would like to jump on something completely new, there's this no new world opening right now so that you can switch and do some new and interesting things and living on the edge using new devices and technologies. So given all that, uh, that we have a bunch of uh, different devices out there on the market and big and smaller companies pushing those technologies together, some people um, from the industry, they um, notice that there is this change that is starting happening, and they call it digital transformations. Some people think that we have um, ongoing change to the upcoming new computing platform, and if you would look at the history of computing platforms and digital transformation, you can actually see this pattern. So looking back at the history, 
uh, when we get uh, first personal computers uh, back in the days, uh, it was first digital transformation, meaning we were able to start digitalizing stuff. So we started putting numbers and letters to the computers. It wasn't very sophisticated, but we could do it and magic started happening. Then the second digital transformation came, which brought us GUIs and the internet. Some of you are probably old enough that remember those, uh, those times. <laughs> and, uh, and for those who remember that, you probably know what a big change that was, right? Uh, but then came another third digital transformation, which probably all of us remember, uh, which brought us smartphones and social media. How many of you remember times before Facebook, YouTube, and iOS devices? Probably all of you, right? Exactly. And at the very beginning, I mean, you can't clearly put a line when that actually started happening, right? It was some, somehow 10, maybe 12, maybe 15 years ago, right? And um, no one anticipated how it will evolve to what we have right now. No one anticipated TikTok, for example, right? Or Uber. Um, it was an ongoing process. And, and for example, I do remember projects at, at the company uh, I worked for, uh, which was dedicated for uh, iOS. Uh, it was 10 years ago, 2012. And there were issues like, hey, we need to buy now like 600 iPhones for our engineers because, well, we, we wrote this software, and so we need to deploy it to production. So they were wondering how to uh, mitigate this problem, how to solve the problem of buying many smartphones. Does anyone ask this kind of question right now? I mean, smartphones are a like, regular piece of device that everyone has. No one asks those kind of questions. So then if you would look at the rise of all the technologies right now, with edge computing, VR, AR, wearables, blockchain, cloud, IoT, 5G, and all the artificial intelligence, you can see that new digital computing platform and digital transformation is emerging. And it might happen sooner or later, but most probably we're going we're gonna to move to something else, right? As the history shows us. But um, all the big heads and companies, uh, they notice that, okay, we have all the devices, we have all the um, experiences for VR and AR, but we're missing one more thing to move the things forward. And so that... Um, the AR experiences, for example, right now, they are, they are more like uh, internet in the 90s, where it was all detached from one another. Like, you, you had your website, but you couldn't collaborate with people on that website. You can't easily share your own content, etc. So it's also with AR right now and VR. I mean, you can play some game, but there's not a lot of, like, social platforms on the AR. You can't collaborate much with other people. You can't create some content. I mean, it's changing, but it, it feels like, like it right now. And for that to happen, we need some connecting tissue, I would say, so that we can, um, we can all of us can, uh, for example, wear some kind of um, glasses or use your mobile phone, and we could experience one common uh, augmented reality experience here, for example, on this stage, right? And so that it's cross-platform and it's persisted that, for example, when you come back to the place where you were using this augmented reality experience, it's going to be there. And that's where all the metaverse, mirror world, AR cloud, digital twin, spatial web comes into play. And don't get me wrong here, metaverse is a big phrase right now. You probably heard about this phrase, right? It's all over the internet right now. Uh, and there's lots of misunderstanding around this phrase. And I'm not going to go into details, uh, but the only thing that I'm, I'm going to say is um, there's no one thing as metaverse. It's not defined right now. So no one knows what it is. Uh, it's way too early. And what Facebook did, changing its name to meta and using the metaverse um, word a lot, was kind of a bad thing that could happen for this world and this kind of technology and our understanding because it brought us more mess than it should have. 
So we have to distinguish them, uh, here um, those two things. There could be a metaverse for VR uh, experiences, like um, have you read or watched the, the movie Ready Player One? Yeah, so like completely like power virtual world where you can actually immerse yourself and just don't live in your physical world, just live in this uh, virtual world. And well, that sounds creepy, right? And this is what most of the people I know um, think when they hear metaverse, that we're going to stop living here and we're going to live in some virtual world. And those kind of, kind of experiences might come. And Facebook is actually working on some, something like that, which is called Horizon World. Uh, it's supposed to be a big social platform for the VR so that you can uh, live and work there. And but what I'm going to focus on is this metaverse or digital twin or uh, AR cloud, whatever you name it, for the augmented reality. Because what we need to, um, to fully experience it, uh, the, I mean, the technology would be a place to map the world and our surroundings so that we can place digital content. And if I would place something on this stage, you should be able to see it as well in the place where I placed it, and you should be able to interact with it as well, and I should be able to see your interaction, no matter device, no matter of what kind of device I'm using, all right? So with all the technologies that are uh, getting common, more common and common nowadays, with all the wearables and IoT, etc., we're going to eventually have a spatial map of our world, uh, this digital twin, and everything connected together so that we can start placing this digital content and share it. And again, I'm going to quickly go through all the big companies to show you that a part of the hardware technologies, they're also pushing this, um, this technology for sharing and collaborating in AR. So, well, Facebook. Of, of, of your, obviously, uh, as I mentioned, they're working on their own metaverse, this fully 3D immersive uh, artificial world to live in. But also, they, they gave some hints a uh, few years ago uh, that they're working on the scanning technologies for uh, gathering data about our surroundings and build up the spatial mesh. I'm not sure where they are with this technology, but it's just interesting to see. Might have it somewhere. Yeah. They used to call it live maps. To achieve this, live maps uses machine perception to construct multi-layer representations of the world, showing where you are in space, recognizing what things look like, and understanding the intrinsic meaning of objects. Connected devices, like smartphones and AR glasses, will scan the surroundings to create a live dynamic index, amplified by crowdsourced data. Allowing the maps to recognize so the challenge here is to and update gather information about surfaces and objects and do the segmentation of it so that we know from the technology standpoint about you know that this is a floor and this is a chair and if it would move to another place we know that happened etc so that our digital content can live on top of that. But. Right now, Facebook is more focused on the VR part of the metaverse. Um, the other thing, Microsoft. They have a great uh, service on Azure, which is called Azure Spatial Anchors. And this is a cross-platform technology, so you can use it on your iOS, Android, and uh, HoloLens devices. And it's basically about designating points on any surface and based on this point, there's a point cloud created of the surroundings of that point, and it's all uploaded to the cloud. And then, based on those information, any other person that would approach this spot and gather some information about the surroundings, that the other person can detect the spot I, I designated in my experience, and then we have this common uh, coordinate system so that we can start placing things in the same place, right? And it's actually something that we can use right now. It's just a, oh, hold on, my mistake. Oops. And uh, you can start playing with it. It's on Azure and it's 
it's basically cheap. It's, it doesn't eat a lot of resources. And, and again, you don't have to own uh, any sophisticated headset. You can start using it on your iOS and Android devices. Um, and with the video, I do have some video to show you that. Oh, you can see it. So to visualize it, you can approach a, a, a place and designate a spot, then scan the surroundings, and that spot will be uploaded to the cloud, right? And some third party could join you and gather information about the surroundings and download this data from the cloud, and then bam, you'll have a piece of digital content in the same place. And then with all the mechanics that, for example, you can use in Unity, uh, you can do a multiplayer thing so that you can all manipulate and play with those digital objects um, uh, in a kind of multiplayer fashion. Or we can leave things for later, like you can leave things on this stage and then come back tomorrow and based on the information in the surroundings you can recreate that. Or like waypoints uh, finding, right? So, for example, you can uh, design a city game and place digital things around the city and then based on the surroundings, uh, you can find your, I don't know, some arrows, for example, or some digital stuff that is scattered around the city. <clears throat> and this is pretty exciting. So Apple, they do also have something very similar to what I've just shown you. It's called location anchors. Uh, but they limited the usage of it to some big cities. So it's like Seattle, New York, Singapore, like several cities in the world. But on the other hand, they're working on something which is called uh, room scanner or room capture, which is something Previous like to this. object capture. That's we object capture. That's an the old scene technology. reconstruction API. But they which started gives you to work on like, space scanning. Of the geometric structure of your space and Some enables brand new augmented reality use cases in your apps. This year, we are very excited to announce a brand new framework called Room Plan. Room Plan allows you to scan your room using your LiDAR enabled iPhone or iPad. It generates a parametric 3D model of the room and its room defining objects, which you can use in your app. Let's take a look at what a Room Plan scanning experience looks like. Room Plan uses sophisticated machine learning algorithms powered by AR to detect like walls, app store and test windows, openings, and doors, as well as room-defining objects like fireplaces, couches, tables, and cabinets. With our Room Capture View API, which uses Reality Kit to render scanning progress in real time, you can easily integrate a scanning experience into your app. And when you're finished scanning, Room Capture View presents the final post-process results for you to use however best fits your use case. And it's there, you can play with it, you can uh, develop it because there is an API for it. Then Google, probably they're the closest to creating a digital, um, digital uh, twin of our world because with all the pictures they gather with Street View, they will, in whenever, I mean, it's not every country, but where they were allowed to do that, they have the digital twin of, of, of actually whole countries, right? And they're using technology called VPS and GPS enabled um, to use it, all the street view uh, information and pictures and some uh, artificial intelligence on top of it, they use it for creating anchors as well so that you can place things outside and based on all this information you can uh, recreate stuff and, at those spots. And that's best visualized in the video. Cloud Anchors enables you or your users to annotate the world with AR content that stays there. So you can build your own constantly so evolving layers on top of the real world, the real world and create location-based experiences based on your 
that can be experienced by anyone and at any time on both Android and on iOS. So we can imagine, for example, as, as this video shows, you can do like city tour guide, for example, with things attached within the city. And of course, there are many other companies, like for example, the one I work for, uh, where my colleagues, they're working for on this um, anchoring technology for very simple devices, so that the magic is not happening on the device itself, but it happens in the cloud. So using, for example, this real wear device, which is really simple, and it only has a screen and, um, and the camera, uh, we're sending uh, pictures to the cloud, and then based on those pictures, we do um, we recreate the 3D map of it based on the pictures, and then we're placing. You can place anchors on those uh, on the videos uh, on the video stream, and whenever you change your um, angle of, of of the object you look at, it's actually anchored in 3D space. And there are also other companies working on their versions of, um, of uh, cloud AR or digital twin. Some of them were already acquired by bigger companies, and uh, some of them are just creating their own, their own thing. So most probably, how much time I have left? Okay, nine minutes. Most probably our world uh, will soon be uh, like colored with data. Uh, let's not see it as a dystopian thing. Uh, let's think as developers how we could leverage those technologies to actually enhance our world and help us um, using technology. And those are the books that inspired me the most when it comes to this topic. Uh, so if you're interested more in, uh, into depth when, um, in those, those topics, I highly recommend reading those. And that's usually a slide when I uh, ask for questions if there are any. No questions. Then thank you. It's been very good. Продолжение следует...